Well, it has been 24 hours since Donald Trump was found guilty on all 34 felony counts in a scheme to illegally influence the 2016 election through a hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels. All right, this morning at Trump Tower, he doubled down saying it's a not hush money, it's a non-disclosure agreement, totally legal, totally common. Joining us now for a closer look at the trial is former Brooklyn Assistant District Attorney Imran Ansari. Imran, thanks again for being with us. Now, we've all had a night to sleep on this verdict, digested and processed. And what's your reaction to the news today? Day. I'm sure you've been talking with a lot of your colleagues in the legal profession. What's the general buzz 24 hours after this bombshell announcement? There's, well, there's shock that it happens so quickly. Uh, and there's also talk about what will be the appeals growing out of this. You know, we know that Donald Trump and his legal team are already at the table looking at um, how they're going to appeal this conviction. We, of course, have the July 11 sentencing, and the appeal would follow that. Uh, and I think there are, uh, you know, there is foundation, there are basis for uh, the uh, a defense team to appeal this conviction. Everything from Judge Mershon's rulings during the trial to the way those jury charges were uh, formatted and then given to the jury to the preclusion of a, a, an election expert witness by the defense. Uh, there's going to be an appeal here, certainly, and I think there's some strong uh, grounds for it. But we have to take the jury verdict as it is, a, un a unanimous verdict from uh, on 34 counts from uh, all those jurors. You have to, to give credit to that. We'll see how the appellate process plays out, but we're watching now all eyes on July 11th to see how uh, the sentence goes down. And I think Trump uh, is taking this to his base and rallying his support. And I think we see unwavering support for Donald mm. Trump. You said that unanimous verdict, but they were not unanimous about the unlawful means, which meant that they didn't have to agree on which of the three crimes, three other laws that Trump did violate. Talking about right. a Supreme Court case back in 2020, that was Ramos versus Louisiana, which had found that you have to have a unanimous jury conviction on all essential elements in a federal case, whether it's federal or state. So is that good enough for an appeal? I mean, that's going to be one strong point on appeal. You, you, you nailed it, uh, Bianca, in terms of um, all the elements, a unanimous uh, verdict or unanimous decision on the elements of the crime. And here we had a jury which was charged that they didn't necessarily have to do that. And I think that's going to be one strong point uh, that the defense is going to be uh, making on appeal, the way the jury was charged, the way they were able uh, to get to a conviction on these accounts in the indictment, there were sort of multiple avenues they could do so. And that may be one point on appeal where the, the appellate court looks at that and, and states that it should not have been done that way. You know, we've already seen some Republicans sort of vowing revenge for this decision when they're back in power. How concerned are you about the politicization of the legal system moving forward? I think it's a real concern. I think it's a, a concern that the, the country's so polarized on political grounds that when you take it to the courts, you're taking it and, and really infusing the justice system uh, with political bias, if you will, or, you know, gamesmanship. And that's not what that's not what should happen here. The justice system should be its own sort of sacred ground where laws are upheld. No one is above the law, but it also shouldn't be weaponized for political means. And I don't want this to set precedent, no matter what party's in power, that they could look to the courts, they could look to uh, a district attorney's office uh, in order to get some sort of political advantage. That's not how this country works. That's not how the Constitution uh, is in play here and the rights under the Constitution. Constitution, and we really should not go that way. It would be a slippery slope that we should not go down. Yeah.